This is a Sessa C44. Now these are built in Italy and it's quite a stylish machine. You can see the way that they brought this deck up and over like this. Looks really good. And it's quite low compared to a lot of sports boats. If you look at the Fairline that's in front of it, for example, you can see how this is a bit more low profile than that. It's a bit sportier, I think. And it's a nice looking boat. Let's come right to the back. Now they do a couple of versions of this. This one has got the high-low platform. In fact, they all have the high-low platform. And you can raise up to 400 kilograms on there. So you can get a fairly decent jet rib on there. But there's an alternative for a garage as well. So if you have that, then what you do is get a sun pad on the top. But if you don't have the garage, and this one doesn't, what you get instead is a simply enormous cockpit area. Look at that. That's huge. So this is the area that you'd lose. You just have a big sunbed on here, garage door at the back, tender would go inside. Does he allow you to carry a tender and then maybe a jet ski as well if you wanted to? But this, of course, instead gives you acres more space in here. It's a really lovely, spacious area. Great party boat. It's got the bimini on at the minute. You can see there are zips around the edge of this, and that's because these will enclose. So you can make this into a completely enclosed area when the weather's not quite so good. And that table you can see is on a high low leg so you can drop that down and make that into a sunbathing area if you wish if you have the garage what they do is this is the same but then that seat comes across here and they've got forward facing seating just there and the sunbed behind it on the opposite side then we've got the wet bar so it's got a two burner hob on this one up here and the sink and then in here you've got a bin that goes in there that one is just storage and in this one you've got a fridge and you can see some of that Italian styling in the way that they've done this wood with these stripes across and the floor as well. Boats normally have the flooring with the stripes going that way. Italians are going for something a little bit different and they're putting the stripes across which I think looks pretty good actually. Another big seating area here and of course you can see that this table will unfold if we move these little fellows out of the way. Pop them on there then this drops across like so. So a really good dining area. And then up ahead is the helm. It's a double helm. Engine controls are here. It's IPS drives, so there's a joystick. That's what this fella here is. And there's a lift bolster as well, so you can drop that down or you can have it raised as it is at the minute, so you can stand there and drive it. Fuel stops are down here, so you can shut the engines off remotely if you ever needed to. And then you've got the switch gear here for, amongst other things, the world's fastest sliding Hard top, are you ready for this? Open. <laughs> That's remarkable. That is genuinely the fastest opening hard top I've ever seen on one of these boats. And now, of course, you've got the helm all lovely and open. You've got a drop window next to it. And so you can have the boat in open configuration. I like that we've done this little bit of stitching on the seats here. That looks really nice. And in fact, all of this is all nicely contrast stitched which is very nice. And here as well, you can see this Italian styling where they've done this metallic paint finish on here with this sort of carbon effect next to it. Multifunction display is underneath there and Volvo engine instrumentation underneath that one. And then you've got VHF radio down in the center. Let's head on down below. Another thing that we'll find with this is they've not put carpets in. They've kept it, it's very sort of med style really. They've kept it nice and crisp and clean with this flooring in. I think that works well. There is a dinette area over on this side, so you can sit there and dine, and you can see that that is an infill cushion sat on there. That sits on the table, so it means that if you want to, you can drop that table down. Again, it's on a telescopic leg, and that allows you to make that into a big sleeping area if you wish. Up in behind, you've got things like the switch gear. That's up underneath there, so all the circuit breakers for the boat, for the DC power and the AC power over on that side. And this is their mostly storage. I think the stereo is in here as well behind one of these. Yes, there it is up there. So that's across there. And again, I like the way they've done the linings in here. It's all very nice and light and contemporary. There's a big hatch overhead, which you can open for a bit of extra ventilation. And underneath the floor, these are all traps that give you access to things like, if I come up here, you've got your water tank, you've got your seacocks, so all your sort of plumbing and other bits and pieces is easy to get to straight down through the floor. If you're wondering what that little fella there is, that's so that when you open this door, it doesn't crash against the cabinets. 
it clips back there and it's magnetic so it doesn't keep crashing around. We'll obviously go into there in just a minute, but let's look at the galley first of all. Sink down here, they've done all this in brushed stainless, which is nice. And a four burner hob, that's pretty rare in a boat like this. Underneath there is the fridge. Drawers under here, like so. And then a bin under that end. And then you've got more storage up here. So places like that. That's for your plates and bits and pieces. And then a microwave as well, up there. And that one looks like it might be a cutlery drawer. No, it's not. Ha! Huh. Extractor fan. How neat is that? Brilliant. TV is up here as well. So when you sit down here, you can watch a film in the evening, if you wish. Let's go forward. This is the guest cabin. So that clips back like so and these are what's called scissor berths so what you can do with these is have them as two singles which is brilliant for kids of course or slide it across into the center that one does exactly the same of course and then you've got a double bed so it makes that a very adaptable area you've got wardrobe in here this is storage up in places like this all the way around there's a hatch up here i like the woodwork in here this light woodwork looks great and you've got reading lights as you can see tucked away underneath there hull windows and those rectangular sections are opening sections to get a bit of ventilation into here and there's tv in here as well this then is ensuite access into the heads this is actually the day head so you can see there's another door just there that takes you straight in and that's giving you a shower and you've got the loo in here as well, of course, and then you've got the sink. There is, in fact, a curtain that pulls around. You can see it there. It comes around on the track, around here and around there, so you don't have to get everything wet when you're having a shower. It just gives you that area there to stand in and keep the rest of it dry. That's that. And if we head on back down the boat, this takes us into the owner's cabin. And this, I think, considering it is quite a low-profile boat, it's a decent size. Look at that. You do drop back a bit with the headroom down underneath here on this side. There's a bit more over here on this side. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, it's a fairly low profile boat. It's quite sporty. And that, of course, is the floor of the cockpit above. If you have more headroom here, then everything goes up. Cockpit floor goes up and then the hard top above it goes up to give you headroom. And suddenly you end up with a, a much higher and less sleek boat. So it's all a compromise at this sort of size, depending on what you want. If you come around here, hull windows, so you've got a decent view out, and this is a big boat park next to you as there is at the minute, and again these opening sections like so. But I think it's a pretty good cabin to be honest. You've got a TV up on the wall, and if we go over onto this side, then you've got a load of storage along in places like this. And you've got hanging storage in here as well. So that's in there. Actually, that's not hanging, that's shelving. That one there must be the hanging. And there we go. And again, nice little reading lights by the bed. Stereo in here as well. That's what that little box down there is for. And if you come around here, this has its own ensuite. That's in here. So you've got toilet there and a sink. And then this one has a shower with a Perspex door that comes across to close that off. Excellent. Let's come out of here. Again, some nice finishes in here, some nice detailing. So, back out of here, we're going to take a turn around the decks. Ah, it's a hinge there. People often ask what the hinge is for, and it is. a bit of storage and again I suspect that's access to systems and that kind of thing I won't get that up I don't think I'll get it down again but yeah mostly for storage you might put a small vacuum cleaner or something like that in there there we go let's head on out put the shoes back on this is a lovely big cockpit area though isn't it very nice I don't mind it at all without the sun pad in the garage, actually. I think that gives such a great entertaining space. I think it'd be really lovely. Nice day, all your friends on board. Let's go around this side. And we'll take a walk around the decks. 
So handrail here, that's that sliding roof, that super fast sliding roof. You've also got things like the radar on top, nav lights, antenna, all that kind of stuff is up there. And if we head right on forward, more sunbathing up here on the bow. So you don't need to convert that seating if you don't want to. You've still got a great place to lie out. That's the hatch above that forward cabin. If you're wondering what these are, these are for fenders. You can just drop these down like that, pop your fenders into them or fold them out, out the way when you're not using them. And then right up to the front, usual sort of thing, you've got your electric anchor winch, you've got your cleats and your fair leads and the anchor on the bow roller over the front. It's a smart looking boat though, isn't it? Very nice. Let's head on back and I'll show you the engines and we'll talk about performance because it's actually quite quick, this one. That's that big sliding roof. You can see how well that opens. And then we'll come right on back. I like this rail up here. That's very useful. And we'll come all the way back into the cockpit. And then we can open this fella here. And this takes us down into the engine space. Now this one is on IPS drives. So these are a pair of IPS 600 engines. They are 435 horsepower each and I'm told they're given the boat over 35 knots. I think they said 36, 37 knots, that sort of area. So cruising there for high 20s very comfortably indeed. It's a pretty nippy boat really. These are the tanks on either side, one there, there's another one down that side. You've also got things like your electronics over on this bulkhead here, battery switches are here, we can reach them easily as well. And so forth. Range on this one, you're probably about 250 miles at fast cruising speed, something in that order. Excellent. Let's come back out of there. And I will pop that one back down. And I think I'm going to finish up here with Maggie. And say huge thanks to Bates Wharf Marine Sales. They organise this tour for me. They're the dealers for these. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. And huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. We'll catch you on another one of these very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.